If you're curious about what the difference in brightness is between the tiny hub and the power bank or the hubs, here's an idea. The stock driver and the tiny hub both have the same six lighting mode, the first of which is a sound activated mode, and then you can switch to the other ones by pressing the button on top of them. The other lighting modes are just different scrolling versions. These devices both work almost identically. The only difference is that this is a type C enabled device. They each have a small rechargeable lithium battery inside that lasts for about 45 minutes. Either way, you're going to want to leave them plugged in. Using a USB type A cable like this, you'll be able to recharge the stock driver. Once you've powered this with a type C plug, it gives you another type C and type A port. Though it really is a hub, it's going to be able to give you more ports than it takes. It can output up to 65 watts. Of course, that's going to require that your input also be 65 watts or greater. Putting the stock driver to the side, we have three different hubs that you can get. They all operate quite similarly in the way that they take one type C cable for power, and they're also giving you another type C and type A port. You will always get at least two of these with your order so you don't have to worry about missing out on all the extra lighting modes that are included here. Moving on from the stock driver and the tiny hub, we have hub A, hub B, power bank A, and power bank B. These are the devices that you're going to want to go with if you're interested in increasing the brightness of your sticker light and making it really bright. These devices give you four to five times more brightness than the stock driver and the tiny hub. The difference between the hub and the power bank is rather simple. There's no internal battery inside of the hubs and the power banks each have a 74 watt hour internal battery that you'll be able to use to power the sticker light for about 20 hours or even to power your laptop, your smartphone, even has wireless charging. So there's a lot of extra features here. But if you just want the extra brightness for your sticker light, you'll be good with these. If you want a little bit more, maybe you'll want to look at the power banks. Hub A and power bank A are going to come with this specialized cable. You'll connect it to your sticker light like this. You are going to want to make sure that everything's turned off before you start hooking it up uh, because if you touch these pins while the device is activated, you might give yourself a little shock. So get everything hooked up and then we can turn it on. The A models have two separate lighting modes, either just on, as you're seeing now, or a sound activated mode, which is engaged by flipping the switch to the second position. So if there was some music playing, or the sound of your voice, or loud noises, it will light up in synchronization. All of the various devices that you can use to power your sticker light have a sound activated mode, and in order to better control that sound activated mode, they're each going to have an adjustable sensitivity dial. So here we have it on the top, and depending on which direction I slide it is going to affect how sensitive it is to the sound of my voice. If you find the noise that's coming out of the driver to be annoying, Probably a good idea to just leave it in the sound activated mode because it's not as noticeable since it's only lighting up and making noise in response to other noises, which kind of masks uh, that sometimes audible sound. The B model works similarly but differently. You again want to take one of the cables that you've got and hook it up to the sticker light, and then again connecting all of this while it's turned off so you don't accidentally shock yourself. And now we can turn it on. So the B models only have one lighting mode versus the two lighting modes available in the A models. The difference is that the sound activated mode in the B model is a little bit more dynamic than what's happening in the A models. On the A models, in the sound activated mode, it just has the entire panel lighting up together as one unit. But on the B models, it's using all five segments and having them light up progressively. But the trade-off is that it doesn't have a steady on mode. However, if you are in a very loud environment, probably the panel will just continuously stay lit if you leave the sensitivity all the way to the easiest setting. So technically it could act in a steady on state much like the A model if you're in a very busy and loud environment where there's always going to be stimulus and input to the microphone keeping the panel activated. I don't want you to look at this cable and worry that it's going to be too short for your setup because you can extend it. So I'm going to give you an example of that right now. You will have multiple cables like this with your order and you can connect them end to end to make an extension. So we can put one into the sticker light. And then we can take the second one, connect that end to end to the first cable. Finally, you can hook that into your hub or your power bank or the tiny hub or the stock driver. Because this is a hub, I'm going to need to give it power. I'm going to supply a power from the power bank. There you are. It's a very, very long cable and everything is still working. If you find it's too bright, they'll each have a dial on top, which you can use to adjust the brightness of the panel. Power bank A and power bank B are exciting because you can use them to power up to four devices simultaneously. We have two C ports, one A port, and then we also have the wireless charger along the top for your AirPods, your smartwatch, your phone, someone else's phone. Maybe you forgot your iPhone cable at home. You can just put the iPhone on top of the power bank and it'll start charging. This is a heat sink here, which can get quite hot if you are using this 65 watt output. Since uh, this device is providing power here, if you're discharging a lot, um, it will get hot. So try not to touch that. In order to use the wireless charging, it's pretty simple. You just put your phone or other device on top. 
and after a few moments, and yeah, there it is charging. The type C port here, you'll be able to use to charge and discharge at up to 100 watts through this port. And then the combination C and A port here puts out a maximum of 65 watts. You can use these simultaneously to charge multiple devices, or of course, if you just wanna power the sticker light for 20 hours and you don't wanna plug anything into your computer, to power the sticker light then that would be another reason to get this so to charge you'll just hook this cable up here now if you want to output it's a good idea to just use this one most of the time but if you for some reason want to use both to output simultaneously there is one thing you'll need to learn about this c port so i have it hooked up and then if i go ahead and plug that into my phone you'll see that it's not charging the bi-directional type c port here it needs to be pre-juiced briefly before it's going to be able to provide output so in order to do that you can just hook it up to itself give it a couple seconds the cable's turned on now it's activated and now i can plug the other end of that cable back into my phone or to my laptop and it will be able to charge appropriately again this port here does up to 100 watts so if the 65 you're getting out of here isn't enough and you need like the super most fastest charge available this port is going to be what you're going to want to use and that's how you're going to be able to activate it the first switch on the power bank activates the battery if you want to charge the power bank you do need to make sure that these switches are turned on the second switch provides power to the electroluminescent driver when we flip that on now it's getting voltage if you ever have issues with getting your power bank charged after draining it to zero, just make sure that you have the first switch on and have this switch turned off. This switch is isolating a power hungry component of the circuit, which interferes with the startup process to recover the battery from 0%. So just having that switched off for a couple of seconds when you plug in your type C cable will help you get back up and running after you've discharged it to 0%. This display here is merely showing you the charge of the internal battery. As the number of bars decrease, that's just letting you know how much power you have left and maybe if it's time to look for an outlet and get your power bank charged back up again.